Could I, could I invite all the children who have come in costume, dressed as biblical characters, if they could make their way to the sacristy, and if any other children want to join them in the procession, to, to come up. So if you've come as angels, as Jesus, as, as Mary and Joseph, as the donkey, or shepherds, do come up to the sacristy, and you'll join us in the opening procession. So can all the children that have come dressed come and join us in the sacristy. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, what will happen is, it will, I'll say we'll invite the first person to light the candle, light the first candle, and then after the candle's lit, we'll have a reading. Then I'll invite some of the children to come up. And then we'll go to the second candle, the second reading. So the reading's in five parts, okay? So there'll be a, okay. And I think for one of the verses, it will be the Gloria singing. Oh, no, we'll sing the Gloria at the end of the, we'll sing the Gloria at the end of like when the angels come up. And then we'll go immediately into the next verse in the candle song, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I, I gave it to one okay, of the other good, Eucharistic good, ministers. Good. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah.
So we are starting soon. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Good evening, everybody. And welcome as we gather together today to begin our Christmas celebrations. The four weeks of Advent are now past, and we gather to celebrate that which we have been preparing ourselves for the birth of Jesus. And so as we begin our celebration today, I'd invite you to be seated, so especially the children can see what's happening. And we're going to remake our journey through Advent as we light the candles, getting ready to celebrate that Jesus, the light of the world, is born for us. And so I'd like to invite the one who is to light candle number one, if they would like to come forward now to light the candle. Okay. If you like. 
Peter Oma. So now we're going to listen to reading number one, the first part of our Christmas story. A long time ago, in the town of Nazareth, lived a young woman named Mary. Mary did her chores, was kind to others, and loved God very much. She was engaged to be married to Joseph, who was a carpenter. One day, while Mary was at home cleaning her room, an angel suddenly appeared. Before Mary could say anything, the angel told Mary that she was favored by God and that God was with her. Mary was surprised. She was trying not to be afraid, but she had never seen an angel before. After all, Mary was just a regular person like you or I. Why was this angel visiting her? What did the angel want? The angel quickly re tried to reassure Mary. Do not be afraid, the angel said. God has found favor with you. You will have a baby boy and are to give him the name Jesus. In those days, the government decided that they should count everyone that lived in the area of the world. So Joseph had to make, so, or Joseph had to take Mary to it this town of Bethlehem to register. It took Mary and Joseph a long time to get to Bethlehem. They didn't have cars back then, so it probably took them a lot longer to get there. This was very tiring for Mary because she was soon going to have a baby. And so at this point, before we light the second candle, I'd like to invite any of the children that have come tonight dressed as Mary and Joseph, if they would like to make their way now to the front and sit on the steps here at the front. Okay. If you want to just sit over there, okay? Just sit there. And so now I'd like to invite the person who's lighting candle number two, if they would like to come forward. Okay, if you want to take a seat. Okay, so if you light it from the first one and light the second one here. Light the advent candle two, king of humble shepherds who Now we have part two of our reading. When they reached the town, all the hotels were full and there was nowhere that they could stay. Finally, someone felt bad for them and offered them a place to stay. The Bible doesn't say for sure where they stayed, but most people think that they stayed in a small barn where animals were kept. In any case, doesn't it seem strange that Jesus, the king of the Jews, wasn't born in a fancy palace or even a hospital? Mary and Joseph were thankful that they at least had a place to lie down. It was warm and there was plenty of straw to lay on. Okay. 
And so having heard of where Jesus was to be born, the place with the animals, I'd like to invite now any of you that have come dressed as animals, as sheep, as donkeys, as cattle, to feel free now to come and join us here at the front. And as we do that, I invite the person that's lighting candle number three, if they would like to come and light the candle. Now let's listen carefully to our third reading. Some shepherds who lived near Bethlehem were out at night in their fields, watching over their sheep. They were worried a bigger animal might come and hurt the sheep. So they sat, sat on a hill, visiting and watching their sheep together. Suddenly, there was a bright light. There was... Just got to there. Okay. there was a bright light. Now, this wasn't just any bright light. The light was so bright that the shepherds had to close their eyes for a minute because the light hurt their eyes. When they opened their eyes to see what was going on, there was a large group of angels who together said, Glory to God and peace to all people on earth. And so now we're going to sing out Gloria. And as we sing the Gloria, I'd like to invite all those who have come dressed as angels, if they would like to come forward now and to join the young people here at the front of our church.
And next, I'd like to invite the person who's lighting the fourth of our Advent candles. If they'd like to come forward. Listen to our fourth reading. Okay. Then an angel spoke to them, Do not be afraid. We're here to bring good news from all people. Today in Bethlehem, a baby has been born. He is the one that will save the world. You will know the baby because he will be wrapped in cloth and laying in a manger. The shepherds were amazed and excited. Did everyone know this news or just them? They had to go see this baby the angels were talking about. They ran as fast as they could and found Mary and Joseph. The, shep the shepherd fell to the knees when they saw them. And so now I'd like to invite any of the children that have come dressed as shepherds, if they would like to come and join the nativity scene here at the front of our church. Okay, and now we're going to have the last of our candles lit. The first time it's been lit this year, a sign that Christmas has arrived. So I'd like to invite now the person who's lighting the fifth candle, if they would like to come forward. Now, can you just move over? And so now we have the final part of our readings for this evening. The night, that night, an exciting, wonderful thing happened. Mary and Joseph had a baby. But this wasn't just any baby. He was baby Jesus, the creator of the whole world, the king of kings, and the one who would save the world. The little baby boy fell asleep in Mary's arms. She wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger on some clean straw. Mary and Joseph soon fell asleep. They were so glad to have this special baby join their family. And now I'm going to invite Ty to bring up the baby Jesus to place him in the crib. And then any other people that want to come and join the young people here at the front, feel free to come and join in the procession. So all the young people that want to can gather here at the front of the church. Okay. Just sit on the sit on the ground, sit on the carpet. <laughs> Come up this side. Just, no, just let tie through. Okay. 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 So now I will take this off, and then you put the, you put him in the thing. Okay. I'm just going to lift him up first. Just sit on the carpet and sit down. 
just going to sit to the end today, okay? Good. Good. So that's our retelling of the Christmas story. The birth of Jesus. So we're all here today because of Jesus. Is that right? Well, I know that's what we think, but when I was thinking about getting ready for Mass today, I began to think, well, it's true we're here because Jesus was born and we're celebrating his birthday, but there were lots of people involved in making that happen and letting us know about it. And it's also because of all them that we're here today. So, for example, what would have happened if when God said to Mary, or the angel Gabriel said to Mary, I want you to be the mother of, my, of God's son? What would have happened if Mary said no? Jesus wouldn't have come. The story would have been different. What would have happened if Joseph had said, oh, I don't want anything to do with this. I'm not going to get involved in this. He wouldn't have had the Joseph look after him. Who knows what would have happened to them. And what about the angels? What if the angels had said, oh, I'm busy, I'm tired. I don't want to go down there and in the cold winter and speak to some shepherds. What would have happened then? The shepherds wouldn't have found him. And then the shepherds, if when the angels turned up and said, go to, go to Bethlehem and find the baby, if the if the shepherds said, oh no, I've had a long day in the fields, I'm tired, I'm not going to bother doing it, what would have happened then? The shepherds wouldn't have seen the baby. And if the shepherds hadn't seen the baby, they wouldn't have been able to go and tell everyone the good news. And them going to spread in the good news is what's been passed down to us today. So it's true it's true that we're here because we've come to celebrate Jesus' birthday. But we're only really able to celebrate Jesus' birthday because all those people did their bit to make the story known. And you know what? We have exactly the same job to do ourselves. We're supposed to let people know about Jesus by the way we live our lives, by the way we share what we have with others. So as we celebrate the birth of Jesus and Christmas, maybe it's good to ask ourselves, do I show up? Do I do what God wants me to do to make the place, the world, a place of peace and love and joy? Because that's the message that Jesus brings to us, that God loves us, that God loves us, that God wants to be with us. And it's also that God comes to us in very weak ways. How many of you have baby brothers and sisters? Okay. And how often do your mums and dads say to you, be careful, be careful of your baby sister, of the baby. Be careful. That's right. Babies are very weak. We've got to protect them and look after them. They could get hurt very easily. And God became a baby to show us how much he loves us. So this Christmas time, we've got lots to be thankful for. We know that God loves us and our parents love us. But also, maybe we've got to recognise that we have a part to play in the Christmas story as it continues to unfold. That we have to be like the shepherds and the angels. We have to be prepared to share with others the message of God's love. 
not just by telling them about it, but by looking out for each other and showing that we love each other. Now, what kind of things can we do to show people that we care about them and that we have heard the message of love that God wants us to live? What type of things could we be doing? Sorry? By talking. By talking to people. That's right. How many people here have ever been somewhere and no one was talking to them and they felt very alone and a bit scared? Yeah, that can happen if people don't talk. Look at all these people here. And half of them won't talk to each other. We come to church and then we go home again just recognising faces. We don't take the time to get to know each other and to talk. And that's been a bit strange the last few years because of COVID that we've been learning to keep away from people. But we have to remember that message of the importance of talking to each other and getting to know each other. So maybe when Mass ends today, you can wish a happy Christmas to the people around you, look out for people that you don't know, ask them if they're visiting, and then find you're embarrassed because they've been coming to church for 10 years and you didn't know them. But that's what happens sometimes. We don't take the time to talk to each other and show we care and want to get to know each other. That's a very good one. What else can we do to show that we've heard the message of Christmas and living as God wants us to live? <coughs> hug people. Hug people. Hands up if you like a hug. Hands up if you like a hug. It looks like the only ones who like hugs are out here. What about the people out there? Hands up if you like a hug. Okay, I think, I think you've got your work cut out for you when you go back to your mums and dads. They really need a hug because they've forgotten how important hugs are. Okay, what else can we do to show that we've heard the message of Christmas? Sorry? Show care, courtesy and concern to show we care about people and do things. What else? Give gifts. That's good. Do you know what one of the best gifts you can give is? Your time. Just as this person said here, talking to someone, making time for someone else is one of the most important gifts that you can have. So it doesn't have to be a lot of money. The important gifts don't cost anything because the real gift that everyone needs is not an Xbox or the latest toy. The real thing that people need is love. That's what we can show each other. and It doesn't cost us anything but time. <coughs> be kind to people. To be kind to people. To show dignity, to treat people with respect, to care for people. I think that's enough. You've given us a lot of homework to do because all these things that you've been saying, I think it would be good for us to try and put in practice for the next few days because tomorrow I bet you it will be very easy to get caught up in well what do you think is going to happen when you wake up tomorrow morning Christmas, Christmas. and what are you going to find under the tree presents and what will happen you'll open your presents and do you know what happens when people open their presents sometimes they have the gifts, but you know what happens when people start playing with their gifts? They're not really that grateful. They're not grateful. They don't say thank you. They, I'll tell you another thing that happens. When people get gifts that they really want, do you know what I've noticed happens? They go deaf. Now, you didn't expect me to say that, did you? Do you know, what I mean is, I've heard and I've seen so many times on Christmas Day, someone gets that special gift that they've wanted and they start playing with it and their mum and their dad might say, share it with your brother and sister and they don't hear them say it. Or they start playing with it and mum and dad says, stop doing that now, I need you to do this and they don't hear, they've gone deaf. Hands up, have any of you ever gone deaf like that? Yeah, it's very easy to do. So, this Christmas, try to make sure that you don't go deaf and that we show that respect and that care and that courtesy. 
so that when our parents ask us to do things, we listen carefully and show them how much we love them. Can you do that? Okay. Well, <coughs> I think maybe at this point, I'm going to ask you to part the ways, and I'm going to come up, and we're going to move on now and continue with the preparation of the gifts, and we'll have our offertory hymn. And I think the offertory collection will be taken up during this while we prepare the altar. And then after we've finished the offertory, I'm going to ask you to come up then. I'll invite you when it's time to come and join me round the altar. Will you do that? Okay. So let, can we just part so I can get through now? Good. That's just, just be careful near the candles. We don't move away from underneath. Okay. Good. And so we'll have our offertory hymn now and invite the people taking up the offertory collection to... A ray of hope flickers in the sky A tiny star lights up way out high all across the land dawns a brand new morn. This comes to pass when the child is born. A silent wave sails the sun sea. The winds of change whispers in the trees. And the walls of doubt crumble down. This comes to pass when the child is born. Rosy dew settles all around. You've got the feel you're on holy ground. For spanity, no one sings for long. This comes to pass. When the child is born And all this happens Because the world is waiting Waiting for one child Black, white, yellow No one knows But a child that will grow up Turn tears to laughter Hate to love, war to peace And everyone to everyone's neighbours And misery will suffer be forgotten it's all a dream, an illusion now It must come true, sometime soon, somehow All across the land, dawns a brand new morn This comes to pass, when a child is born This comes to pass when a child is born Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Heavenly Father, as we gather together this evening, we thank you for the gift of your Son. We ask you to help us to copy him in the way we live our lives, to be people of love, showing care and concern for those who we meet, sharing the little we have with those who we meet. We ask all this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. So I'm going to invite the children now on the steps. If you'd like to come up now and join me around the altar. Just be careful near the candles that you don't knock the candles and come up around the table of the Lord. Okay. 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 The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
God, our loving Father, on this, the day of the birth of Jesus, your Son, we are glad to give you thanks and praise because you have shown us how much you love us. And with Jesus, we sing your praise. So echo with me what I sing to you, okay? Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. Because you love us, you made this great and beautiful world and you sent Jesus into it to show us how we should love one another. And with Jesus, we sing your praise. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God. Jesus came with the mission to show us how much you love us. He came to gather us around him as the children of one family. And with Jesus, we sing your praise. Glory to God, glory to God, glory in the highest. Glory to God. For such great love, we thank you this Christmas time with all the angels and saints as they praise you and as they say. to be seated or kneel at this point you can stay standing the young people with me blessed be Jesus whom you sent to be the friend of children and of the poor Jesus came to show us how we can love you father by loving one another he came to take away sin which keeps us from being friends and hate which makes us all unhappy. He promised to send the Holy Spirit to be with us always so that we can live as your children. God our Father, we now ask you to send your Holy Spirit to change these gifts of bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. The night before he died, Jesus, your son, showed us how much you love us when he was at supper with his friends, the disciples. He took bread and gave you thanks and praise. Then he broke the bread, gave it to his friends and said, take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice that was filled with wine. He thanked you, gave it to his friends, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And so, loving Father, we remember that Jesus died and rose again to save the world. He put himself into our hands to be the sacrifice we offer you. Lord our God, listen to our prayer. Send the Holy Spirit to all of us who share in this meal. May this Spirit bring us closer together in the family of the Church. With Francis, our Pope, <coughs> with Vincent, our Bishop, the other bishops, and everyone who serves your people. <coughs> Father, remember our families and friends and all those we do not love as we should. We remember those who have died, especially Eileen Doherty. Bring them home to you to be with you forever. Gather us all together into your kingdom. There we shall be happy forever. With, <coughs> <coughs> with the Virgin Mary, <coughs> Mother of God and our Mother, there all the friends of Jesus the Lord will sing a song of joy. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. And let's stand and turn to our Heavenly Father, praying as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. <coughs> Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from. Lord, deliver us, we pray, from every evil graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let's offer to each other now a sign of that peace. And I'm going to invite you to go back to your mums and dads and give them a big hug for Christmas. Okay? Off you go.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us to eternal life. For communion, because we have such crowds, I'm going to ask if the people that are standing could actually go outside the church and someone will come and give you communion outside and you can then come back in. But it allows the movement around the church to happen smoothly and safely. So Father Chris will be going out the back door. So if the people that are in the porch and standing at the back can begin to make their way outside, so he'll give communion outside the church. And likewise, the people standing at the side door, if you can go out and communion will be brought to you. Okay? And then the stewards will guide people around for moving benches from the benches when it's time. Can you go to the side porch? Outside. Yeah, if you go and stand away so you bring them away from the church. Okay. Do you want the body of Christ? Almighty God bless you, the body of Christ. Almighty God bless you, the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The stars are bright, we shine. It is the night of the dirty Savior. Oh, 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity of gathering together, sign of how big your family is. We pray that we would be able to love one another as you have taught us to do so. And we pray that the love that we celebrate this Christmas time is something we bring into our lives every day of the year. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. And maybe at this point, if I could invite the children to come back to the front again. No, we're going to face the baby. So, if you, if you come down on the bottom step, if you come down a bit so people can see. Okay. So, today... We're celebrating what? Christmas. Christmas. And what is Christmas? Jesus' birthday. birthday. Now, what do we usually sing on someone's birthday? Happy birthday. Are you going to sing happy birthday to Jesus? Yes. Okay, so let's turn and let's hear you all singing then, okay? Are we going to be okay? <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Jesus, happy birthday to you. Now, do you know we wish you a Merry Christmas? Yes. Yeah. So should we turn out to our mums? and dads and we'll sing we wish you a merry christmas okay so we've got all going to face outwards now and maybe the choir can lead us is that possible we we wish you a merry christmas we wish you a merry christmas we wish you a merry christmas and a happy new year the The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless each one of you and your families in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is coming to an end, but before we go, maybe we can give a thank you to the choir for helping us with the music. And let's thank all those who did the readings and lit the candles and got the church ready. Sorry? Yeah, 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 yeah. And let's give a thanks to the altar servers. And let's give a thanks to all of us for coming out and celebrating together. And so... Our mass has ended, but Christmas is beginning, so let's go now in the peace and the love of Christ. Thanks be to God. And maybe what we'll do is they'll have a few songs here. Okay, so we're going to have our last hymn while the procession goes out, so the altar service can fight their way through. And then the children, if you stay up here and sing a few songs with the choir. Do you know Jingle Bells? Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll have that one after the hymn, okay? So let's go. Okay. Long time ago in Bethlehem So the Holy Bible says
If I could have your attention. If I could just have your attention, please. Could I have your attention, please? It's better without the microphone. We have a mass beginning in about 25 minutes. So we need to clear the church to set up for the Silla Malabar Rite Mass. I'm sorry, but we need people to begin to leave. God bless. Happy Christmas. Thank you.